This is the main event of the evening scheduled for 12 three minute rounds of professional heavyweight championship boxing. It is sponsored by Woodstock. Now, introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with black trim. He tipped the scales at 96 kgs even. He hails from Butler, Pennsylvania, in the United States of America. He is trained by Kevin Barry. He has 45 professional fights, 38 wins, 7 losses, with 24 big wins coming by way of KO. Representing Rugby Union, ladies and gentlemen, this is Brian the B. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner enters the ring wearing white trunks with black trim. He weighed in at an even 99 kgs. He hails from Toronto, Gisborne, New Zealand. He is trained by Henry Schuster and managed by Kenny Lanesfield. He's fighting out of Shane Cameron's fitness on the North Shore of Auckland. A former multi-title holder in the heavyweight division. He has 32 professional fights with 29 wins, 3 losses. With 22 big wins coming by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the reigning, defending, WBO Oriental Heavyweight Champion. Presenting, Shane, the Mountain Warrior, Well, the crowd loves him. By the way, these are two really, really nice men. But they're warriors in the gym. These guys did promotional tours with Duco together, so they get to know each other well. But I assure you, folks, they will do all they can do to defeat each other in the ring tonight. These are consummate professional fighters and athletes. Well, these two, they both go forward fighters. They would fight in a fine box for free. Well, here he comes. Minto's going to try to press the Shane early because that's all he can do. If he pressures him wrong with that left hand now, he's going to get knocked out by the right hand. And you see Shane trying to sneak off the left shoulder, Minto, with his jab. He comes with a hook, but he wants to land the right hand. Kevin Barry told me he was trying to get that left hand up for Minto, but Minto likes to throw from the hip. That'll spell disaster unless he catches Shane and catches him soon. And Minto is trying to prop for that right hand. You're so right. He's going down to the body to prop that right hand over the top, just like we saw Parker do against Francois Borta. And he's one of those ugly fighters. He will try and punch and dirty box on the inside, punch out of the clinch. You'll see him throw low blows. You'll see him throw hard on the inside, like dirty boxing, which is legal in MMA. It's not legal here, but you'll see a lot. With Minto's the type of guy from the... Uh, Area of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with a tough street fight, his tough coal miners. Shane is a mountain warrior, but he's fighting a warrior tonight. This is good stuff. This is really good professional boxing right now. They're both in good shape, decent shape. Shane has been off a long time, over 380 days, but he looks sharp to me, just the same. Just, just over throwing a little bit, a little bit tense. Got to watch he doesn't drop the right hand when he throws the jab. He's just a little bit off with his timing. And Minto walking in with the double fisted guard and then pushing off and trying to punch off the break. Well, you know, again, I mentioned that Shane just got married and had the baby. He's, uh, you know, he's really, really excited about this. I guess his baby's due, I should say, right? He's having a son. Not far off. Nice little overhand right. He's starting to time the jab there. And one thing that impresses me with Shane Cameron is he throws the left hook after he throws the right hand. Shane is a really, really good fighter. Better than a journeyman. His whole career, Brian Minto, has been described as a journeyman. But he's fought a lot better fighters in his career than Shane has. I mean, this guy's been in with world champions three or four times. He hasn't won those fights, but he hasn't been out of any of them. As he Minto has come in, doing what Kevin Barry has told him to do. You've got to pressure Shane. Well, Cameron is used to going forward, and we, we see Cameron there. He's just timing's just off. He's throwing single shots at the moment, just needs to set up a little bit better. Lance Treble doing work on the inside, getting his boys to break. You know, Mike, he got nailed with that last right hand, and he had to hang on. He's not all there right now. 
his jabs, Minto's actually getting his jabs through, and it's uh, slowing Shane down. Shane's a little tentative right now. He's got hit hard. Shane just kicked and tried to drive him downstairs, but he's getting hit coming in. A lot of aggressiveness by both of these fighters. I think Cameron is just drifting into the right hand a little. He just needs to change his drift and just go to the right a little more. He's looking for the right hand himself. Perhaps if he goes back on his bike, uses the jab first, and then comes back to the right hand. See, he's looking for that overhand, but Minto's rolling the shoulder off it. Yeah, that's it. He's rolling the shoulder. Nice fight. Nice fight for the first round. We got more of this coming up. Don't run away. This is exciting stuff. There's Joseph Parker, guy that I believe will be, without question, the heavyweight champion of the world someday. He's going to come, on, come along at exactly the right time for the Duco boys because the Klitschko brothers in another three or four years are going to be retired. And that man with a big smile, his mom and dad are here tonight. Wonderful people. Trying something that dead is not Listen to Kevin. Don't try to clean it. You know you got a better chat than you can. Nice and good. Let's get your chat going. Hey, Mike, who do you think won the first round? I gotta say, I'd give that to Minto. He landed more, and he did actually land a couple of nice shots with Shane just leaning back on the ropes rather than dropping his shoulders forward. So, uh, Minto edges that round quite nicely. I gave it to him too because he actually hurt Shane at one stage. Watch this one. See, that's a punch. That jab is a punch. You get him walking into that with his weight, and that's a serious punch. All right, here we go around that. That's, right. that's also a Kevin Barry special, that up jab from the crouch position. Henry Schuster telling Cameron he had the better jab and to use it. Well, let's see what he can do here now. Let's see if Minnow can keep the momentum going. Boy, I tell you, this just goes to, again, again, I tell the people of Australia, New Zealand especially, that your silver medalist from 84 who beat Evander Holyfield is absolutely one of the best trainers in the world. And I don't say that as a, as a mate of Kevin's. I say that because it's true. This guy, this guy took a journeyman fighter in three weeks and has him competing with a guy that has a lot more ability. See, Mento, Ed Buttonham, Lance Rebel said, don't do that, don't do that. That's on purpose, you know. He's trying to intimidate Shane, trying to get him off his game. That's Kevin Barry stuff, because Kevin is a super tough kid. Minto keeping his right hand up. Cameron is going with the left hook. He's leading with the left hook quite often off the jab, but Minto's on it. He's got the right hand up. And see that right hand? He's throwing the right hand after his left hook, and Cameron is drifting into it. Watch his drift. He throws the jab, and then he drifts to his, to his left, which is into Minto's right hand. It all comes down to conditioning now, because clearly Minto at this stage is a better boxer with a minute and 40 seconds to go in the second round. At this stage, and there's a long way to go. Is he in the kind of shape? That the Big right hand. hand! He nailed him with a solid right hand. Let's see what the legs are of Shane. Shane's hurts. telling you. This guy's nailed him with some serious shots. Now it's time to rough him up. Goes to the body. Now it's time actually for a low blow. Let's see if he throws it. He's nailing shots. He's hurting Shane. Shane does the exact right thing that Kenny Redford told him to do. Hang on and walk him back. The one thing with Cameron is he's not actually an in-fighter. He doesn't fight well in roller shots on the inside. Yeah, well, he's getting pummeled right now. He's getting hurt. He's flat-footed. He wants to fight hard, and he's got a lot of courage. A lot of time to go. 59, 58, 57, 56 seconds in round number two. Big left, left hook. hook. Big left hook. Solid right hand behind it. Mitchell can drop him here if he catches him. Shane better be in shape. His heels are down. His legs are heavy. I don't know if Minto realizes that he's hurt him. I think Minto knows that he's hurt him, but Shane Cameron is one of those guys who, who just, he's got guts right down to his ankles. He will continue fighting until he's chopped both left, left legs off. Well, he's hurt right now, I'm going to tell you, folks. His legs are flat, his stance is wide. Triple he's trying jab. to avoid this guy. He runs into the triple jab. Now remember, Minto's got a serious jab. These body shots are tough. Nothing is going right for Shane right now with 14 seconds to go in the second round. He's lost the first round. He's definitely losing the second round because he got beat up in this round and actually staggered a couple of These are hard shots, folks. Look at Shane, though. That's His first... legs buckled just before the bell. That's the first time we've seen Cameron come off, though, and fight off the clinch. But he's not tying up the right arm. He needs to get his arm either under it or lock up the right hand. And if you watch this, Minto on the inside is doing his damage. He's defending the left hook, which is the main shot that Cameron is throwing. And then when he gets inside, he doesn't stop. He goes to work. He uses every trick in the book. He uses props with the elbows. He props with his forearms. 
And then Cameron is just sucking on his mouth guard again and again and again. One thing we know for sure, Cameron has a good chin and incredible heart. Uh, he's got all that, but I'm really uh, at shock here because I got to tell you, I've done several of those fights in Atlantic City. This isn't the fighter that I saw in Atlantic City, and he was even younger. Kevin has done a remarkable job with this guy in just three weeks. Remember, you can't change his style, but he's got him mentally into this fight. Well, he's a live underdog and far from it right now. He's a man who's taking away Shane Cameron's dream so far but that doesn't mean he's going to take it all away remember this guy's 38 years of age shane is getting up there too good right hand by shane cameron and again he'd established the jab he doubled up on the jab he took time coming at the extra right hand of his own and he's wobbled he's wobbled again nailed upstairs problem is the jab of mental is more effective than shane has been at this point shane's going to reach advantage but this guy's an in fighter and Cameron doesn't like it. Again, he walks him back. You know why he does that, folks? Because you can't get hurt when a guy's back on his heels. You notice how Minto's tough, he throws him off. That's the type of thing Kevin Barry teaches his fighter. Don't take any crap from anybody. Remember Joseph Parker when he was hurt in his last fight? Cameron landed a good right hand left hook. And Cameron is just starting to tie up the arm. Yeah, for the well, first time we've seen that. See, he's putting the arm on the outside. He's negating that right hand from Minto. But Minto's using plenty of tricks himself. He loaded up on the left hook that time. But see, Mike, you see things that are so technical that, you know, the average fan may not be able to appreciate, but you know exactly what's going on in there. And you're absolutely right. He's got to keep that arm tied up or he's going to get nailed. Drifting Stay off to right the right. Now. Yeah, that's it. Just got to make sure he keeps that right hand of his up when he's drifting away. I'd like to see him throw what they call a draw right hand. Drift away to his right as Minto comes in. Nice body work from that one. Wobbledon. The overhand right. He heard him. Minto's in trouble now. He's in a heap of trouble. He's hanging on for his life. Let's see if Shane can get loose. This is when Lance needs to be in there and get him out. Finally. All right, now Shane knows he's hurt him. Let's see if he can finish him. Cracks him again. He's trying to line him up with the left. Drop the big right. Go to the body, Shane. Go to the body, son. Overhand right, left up a cut with Shane. Shane, Sir Cameron well. Minto's keeping the left hand up against the left hook, but the left upper cut will get through. You got him. Well, have the cobwebs cleared. Cameron yes. knows he's hurt him, but he just needs to do something to try and set him up. Don't go straight to the right hand, Cameron. Work it. Exchange of jabs from both boys. Oh, this is good stuff. Shane had him, and it appears that, uh, that Minto is in very good condition because he's back again. His legs aren't wobbling anymore. Now he's got Shane back and forth. I love a seesaw heavyweight fight. This is good stuff, folks. You don't see any better, faster pace boxing than this. It's seesawing back and forth. Love the work of Minto body on the inside, but Cameron is now starting to roll with the shots. He's starting to feel what Minto is throwing. He's into this fight. And there's a cut. Yeah. Cameron has cut over the top of his left eye. That's the right hand, right eye, uh, left eye that's taken a lot of damage from the right hand. A nice uppercut Shane scored. By the way, even though Shane's fatigued, he won that round. Well, we head off to this break. Shane Cameron making a comeback in the Woodstock fight for life. Well, Lance Rebel referee has said unequivocally to the ringside judges that the cut was caused by a punch. In other words, it will not be declared a no contest. That cut over the left eye of Cameron could be a decisive factor in this fight, particularly if he starts to eat those right hands continuously. In other words, folks, if it's stopped by a cut, it's going to be a technical knockout victory for Minto because it was a clean punch. But on the other hand, Kenny Rainsford did a nice job. Henry Schuster gave the instructions while Kenny worked in that cut. They've done a nice job. It's in a bad spot, but it's not particularly a bad cut. And Lance Rebel knows all the tricks. Minto now, he'll be working the head on the inside, looking for any little elbows. Cameron needs to throw a right hand left up, cut, not always the left hook. Watch Minto with that jab try to get on that uh, cut. Watch him headbutt him. Watch him when he has his head next to him. Wag him. Watch him. Watch his head. Right now, watch him. He's trying to get that head on that cut. Rebel doing a good job breaking him up. Yeah, Lance is, Lance is on top. A very good referee. And he, he knows what's going on here. 
Nice solid shots by, uh, wow, Minto. There's no quit. Trying to get at that cut. Shane needs to walk him back, and finally he does. But Minto's a bull, he doesn't want to be muscled back. That's the first body shot we've seen landed in anger from Shane Cameron. That is a Sunday punch that he does throw well. But he's still going with the left hook. He needs to come up with the uppercut. He's got to come with the uppercut again, like you said, Mike, and land the big right hand. Nice double jab. It's all right. Shane's a little fatigued, though. And he's drifting into the right hand again. They're just That's that habit of going drifting to his right. That triple jab from Minto. This is the live underdog starting to bite back. Uh, he certainly is. I said that at the top of the show. Based on who he's fought, he is a live dog, and he's proving it. I actually thought that Shane would knock him out, but Minto is not the same fighter I saw years ago, so throw that out with a dish one. This well, is a that, tough battle right now, plus Shane's cut. Again, Cameron not changing levels. He's going right hand, left hook. He needs to go right hand, left uppercut, or to the body. And Minto, every time Cameron steps back off the break, he answers with shots. This is an experienced professional. He knows his trade. Folks, listen to what Mike is saying. He's telling you exactly, technically, what he should be doing. He's so good at analyzing it, I don't know if you can pick it all up. But listen to him very carefully. His words are very important. Unfortunately, the fighter's not listening to him, and he's making the mistakes that he's talking about. Another right hand there, and that one buckled him. Yeah, he was hurt by that. Who wants this to know for 27 seconds to go in the fourth? Look at this, Shane taking some punishment here. Minto comes forward like a bull. Look at this stuff, folks. I love it. I love it. This is great stuff. 15, 14, 13 seconds to go. There you go. Minto pushes up with the left hand, comes over the top of the right hand. But Shane Cameron, there's no quitting this, dog. No. Watch the head of Minto every time he's on the inside. He'll try to tap that left eye. And look at his right eye as well now. Cuts over both eyes from Cameron. I will be back. What a, what a sensational battle this is. The two tough cookies. Cut in the right, cut in the left. Actually, it was just blood, a little bit of clearance. So still just a small cut over the left eye. But Minto, he landed consecutive shots off both hands to punctuate that fourth round. Minto starting to go ahead on the judges' scorecards at this stage. Probably four rounds, sorry, three rounds to one. Shane Cameron, that's he has exactly, a fantastic chin. That's exactly how I have it, Mike, three to one. And here we saw as the, as the round ended, uppercut, left hook, right hand, Minto came on. But this isn't David Tua punching, this is Brian Minto, he doesn't have the same power. Which allows Cameron's granite chin to come into effect. Kevin's saying we need this fight, you know what? Kevin wants it to win so he can go back to New Zealand three or four more times. Here we go, this is round number five with the Woodstock Fight for Life, the Colonel Bob Shoulder, Mike Gango over ringside. There's a bit of tape free on uh, Minto's jabbing glove. You'll and see that's that. good, Kevin pulled that up on purpose so when he gets fatigued, he can lift that up and get a break. You watch, Kevin knows what he's doing in that corner. Very experienced. Round five. So the Woodstock fight for life here in Auckland, New Zealand at the Trust Arena. Yeah, the, as we're sprayed by the sweat of these guys right above, I'd love to see Cameron roll with that right hand of Minto and come back with a right uppercut, but he's just not reading the shot. He took a hard left hook to the temple area. He seems okay from it. Lines up in front of him. That body both shot here. guys are very dangerous right now, Mike. They're both hurt and they're both dangerous. Both corners saying, watch the head. Cameron's... Look, when Cameron is on the ropes, he, he leans back too much. He's got to drop forward with the shoulder and time up. Now, see, Lance Reeve was calling for them to free the hands up. Nice little left hook on the inside, but body work from Minto. Boy, he's doing a good job for that body of Shane Cameron. Yeah, Minto wins every inside battle. You're absolutely right. And by the way, I agree with you, scoring 100%. Remember, 3-1 to one is still only two points in the scorecard. Oh, he's taking a point away. Well, that evens a fight right up. That's a little bit early, I've got to say. There was no warning. And now KB, Kevin Barry. Oh, what do you know? The, the, the tape's come loose on the glove. Oh, what a surprise, right, Mike? Watch Kevin take all the time in the world in there. Let's see. Uh, no rush. Now he'll slip the Vaseline into that one and see if he can get that loose, too. He knows every trick in the trade. He learned it from Angelo Dundee, the great, the late Angelo Dundee, who trained Muhammad Ali and Ray Leonard. And Roberto Duran for his career and so many other greats.
I would like to see Cameron just vary his right hand too. Sometimes rip it to the body, then come up with that left hook. Just change levels a little more. Otherwise, you start to get predictable. Again, he eats another short right hand on the inside, those chopping shots. If Shane wins this round, this fight's dead even. Because the round is going to be even. If Vinto wins this round, it should be 10-9, but then he loses a point. It'll be 9-9. Nine -nine. Nice little uppercut there from Minto, but he, he is getting a little wild with the shots. No, he wasn't wild with that one, Mike. He nailed him right on the chops. And he's really annoyed that he lost a point. I bet that Lance might have been a little quick, but I'm not going to judge Lance Rebel. Oh, he hit now with a left hook. He got caught twice. He got caught twice by Shane. He's right back again. Boy, are these guys tough. 27 seconds to go in the fifth. We got us a Pier 6 brawl in Auckland. This is great stuff. I love it. Well, Shane Cameron, fight on the inside. Minto comes back with body work. This is what you call a fight between two seasoned warriors. Well, there goes the mouthpiece. And another experienced professional strick as well. The mouthpiece pops out. Well, a bit of breathing space. Yeah, he's got to get his breath. Now, see, this is not an experience. This Kevin would have held that mouthpiece up for another 10 seconds. Wash it, drop it a couple of times, and give his man another 10 or 15 seconds. They rushed it in the corner. You don't rush when you're in the corner. Cameron's having problems with his eyesight. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a major fact in this fight, because Minto's head is all around that. It's going to be a serious situation. The doctor's going to be coming in here and examine exactly what's going on here. Now, Dave Renato, who's a normal doctor, is away doing him under assignment tonight. I'm not familiar with the doctors in charge tonight, so I don't know what he's going to think. But that cuts now a problem. Now, remember, in that round, well, I think that Mitchell won the round, but he loses the point, so it's a 9-9 round. So we're at the same point we were at the end of the fourth. On our you've got scorecards, they are unofficial. You've got to beat him for the punch, brother. With uh, Minto here Doesn't a couple mean? of rounds. And that's providing uh, these judges the know how to score that round. It's always a problem yeah, at the slow, conventions. Man. Judges get confused with this sort of thing. Thinking if, if the guy wins the round and he loses a point, well, then it should be 10-9 the other one. That isn't the way it works. So we don't know what's going to happen here tonight. Let's listen. Bring him onto your right foot. Your back foot will Well, do you look, Brian Minto? you got to say that, that's, uh, that's Kevin Barry. That's the skills of an experienced pro. And you got to remember Kevin Barry when he fought Evander Holyfield at the Olympics. Annoyed him so much with his dirty work on the inside that Evander actually dropped him after the bell, which resulted in the disqualification. So KB knows his way around the dirty, bro dirty tricks handbook. Yeah, but I mean, you go to Evander. I used to say to uh, Johnny Ruiz, you graduated from the Evander Holyfield School of Dirty Fighting. And, and that's, that's cool, but he got away with it. This guy's using elbows, he's doing everything. Keep it clean, you guys. <laughs> Lance says keep it clean. One thing that Minto does is he props down with that, that right forearm, and then he loosens up his left hook. He just moves his right hip around and loosens up the left hook. Gets clipped by another right uppercut on the inside. It's a good punch for Shane. You know, the other thing, folks, in the strategy of this tough stuff, he's warning him again about the headbutt. What he should do is get catch with another elbow as he goes by him to the left shoulder and catch him with an elbow. Is he's not going to lose a point for that, and it probably will open up the cut enough to stop the fight. And he's clever enough to do it. That's what Kevin's counting. Start right up the cut for a right hand. Right on top of that cut again. Wow, boy, Lance is earning his money tonight. One point. Another point. I, I, I got to say, I think he's been a little bit quick on the trigger. Now, actually, you know some. He's right, because this guy's taking advantage of a lot of dirty stuff. It's cost him two points. Yeah, he might have been quick, but Lance is in there tight, Mike, where he can see every single little dirty thing that even we might not be able to see. Cameron working well off the jab when he throws it. Now, notice Cameron's hands are up a lot higher now. In actual fact, he looks a better fight. Nice little right hand left hook on the inside. Minto answers back. Here's Minto now with the uppercut. Shane landed a pretty good shot. Remember Minto now, who was two points ahead, has lost two points in the last two rounds. This fight right now is dead even, but the cut is bad. It's real bad now. Minto's trying to load up with the left hand. He'll try to headbutt him again. He doesn't care. He said, he said, you know what he's doing? He's challenging Lance. Do you have the BBs to take another one away? That's a clean couple of right hands here from Minto. He's winding up. He's getting fatigued, but he is landing. 
And I think Cameron is struggling to see the shots coming. Oh, he's really struggling now. He's in a lot of trouble. It's time almost for Kenny Rangeford to say, don't let my man get beat up. He can fight another day. This is no disgrace. He doesn't need to fight anymore tonight. He's going to get busted up bad. He may still be able to win the fight, but it might not be worth what he has to do. Minto's got him on the ropes. He's got him totally busted up. He's nailed him with all kinds of shots. But with that said, Shane is still in the fight. Well, Cameron has no quit in him, and there's no way... Oh, he won't quit. He Eisen won't quit. Against Eisenrite, he was behind, and he kept on fighting. He has won fights with nasty cuts. He's come from deep water before. Well, as a matter of fact, he got Minto with a decent right hand that time. And a little uppercut, and a left hook to finish the round. All right, we'll be right back. Plenty of hot heavy action from Auckland. Now remember, as you watch this replay, let me go over it, Mike, rather than describe the replay. What has happened in the last two rounds is that Minto has had one point taken away. That doesn't mean he's lost the rounds. You see them working on the cut, and this is a serious cut. They're giving him one more round. If I were the corner, I'd stop him now because he's getting beat up. He doesn't need to have that slice open anymore. Right now, he says, looks like there's three cuts there. Okay. Yeah. Giving him one more round. I would have stopped it. Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably err on the other side. I would let him go out. You would, because you're a fighter. That's what fighters do, man. Yeah. I'm only a broadcaster. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's Mitho's fight to win, Shane Cameron's to lose. Well, Shane has got to do what Joseph Parker did when he was cut and let it all go. He caught Mitho. Has he got the courage? Go right hand. Saw the right hand by Shane. He knows he's going to land it. It's do or die. There is no tomorrow in terms of rounds. Shane is going to win it right now. Watch this, folks. This is exciting stuff. He's really performing too, Mike. Well, he's, he's found his range. He's better from outside. He's not good on the inside stuff. And finally, he goes to the body and comes up with the left hook. Again, changing levels. I'm just shocked to see how good Kevin has done with this kid in three weeks. It amazes me. And the dirty fighting is by no accident, I assure you. Without wow. question, he know how to get to this guy. Try to cut him. See that head? Very sneakily, if there's such a word, bounce up that eye again. Rebel. Lance Rebel. Shutting it down early on the inside. Cameron. Again, he's, he's just lost a bit of sting on that left hook of his in particular. He just needs to change up his rhythm, throw something different. He can't make this, got nothing left. This guy, you know, he, they caught him with a glancing blow, but Minto's still strong. His jab is a punch, but Shane's face is really busted. Whoa! Have a whistle past his nose. A minute and 37 seconds, all practicability. Unless Shane can stop him, this fight's going to be over in a minute and 30 seconds. 90 seconds to go, Shane Cameron all on the line, it's do or die. Could we be seeing the end of the career of another heavyweight fighter? He's fading Cameron and he's not seeing those right hands coming. It won't be the end of his career because he's fought valiantly for guy that's been on. That answers the question, 388 days is no good. I thought it might be an advantage at this stage in his career. He's Mito. out on his feet right now. Mito is to tired go. as well. And Mito is very tired, but his punches are not. He still has zip in his punches. Misses with the right hand. Catches him with a solid right hand. Shane's hurt again. He's flat-footed. His thighs are heavy. Digging body shot by Mento. This is tough stuff. Shane, Shane is not hanging on anymore. He's trying to. Lance breaks him. Only 41 seconds to go in this fight. Providing that they stop it because of the cuts. Shane has fought valiantly, but it's not enough. This guy Minto is some kind of bull, and Barry has done his job with him. Cameron just needs to come upstairs with the uppercut. He's there for the uppercut because Minto's gloves are all on the outside, and you can even see it there. But you know what, Mike? The things that make fighters great are the slight little things that they can do that other guys can't. Fatigue has taken that away from Shane in this fight. He's getting hurt. He's back on his heels. Minto's trying to get that forearm and that arm, and he's got it on it. See that? Sneaky stuff away from the referee. He got away with it. Loads up the shot. This fight should be over. Shane can't continue. He's out of his feet. He's cut. He's busted up. I think the doctors will insist they stop it. Let's see what happens. They should, by the way. Shane can do no more. He gave it all. He'll never quit. They stay true to his word. 
see the doctors in there. I was scored, by the way, 67-64 at this stage. I think he wants to go another round. He won't quit. I think that's it. Is he on the stool? Kenny is smart. He'll stop it. I think that Kenny said no more, and he's right. That's the sign of a guy that wants to protect his fighter. Kevin doesn't realize that his man has won the fight. Let's see what happens. It's all over! It's all over! Mitko will come back to the beautiful country of New Zealand. Kevin Berry got his wish. What a great job he did with that kid. That kid was only a journeyman fighter. He fought like a champion tonight. Great stuff, and I can't say enough about the great job that Shane did. 388 days off proved to be too much, but he was in against a guy that's a certainly changed fighter under the tutelage of Kevin Berry. That was a sensational fight for as long as it went. Well, Brian Mintzake, superb performance. He busted him up on the inside. Shane Cameron wasn't able to make the adjustments, and Kevin Berry now in a quandary. They, there is no doubt that they will set up Minto as a fight for Joseph Parker further down the track. They'll make a hero of Brian Minto. They'll get other fighters for him in locally. And there is no doubt that Duco will keep tabs on Brian Minto. We'll come back with the official rendition by a ring announcer, the captain. Stick with us, folks. We'll be right Yes, here comes the big belt around the middle, and he deserves to be the brand new WBO Oriental Champion. It looks good around his middle. You're going to see more of him back in New Zealand. And you know something? I love Shane. I hate. I don't think this is the end of his career. Ken did the right thing and stopped the fight. This guy's career isn't over. Now let him get back in the gym a few times. But this guy, Ryan Minto, we're going to see more in New Zealand now. A lot of options for the Duco boys, Dean Lonigan, and of course David Higgins. Congratulations once again. You have put on one win of a show. Well, Brian Minto, he came in as the underdog. Shane Cameron looked the confident fighter out of the pair. But Minto didn't read the scripts that they had written. He came on strong right from the outset. He dipped down low. He launched his right hand. And on the inside, he really went to work. He dug to the body. He went upstairs, downstairs. And Shane Cameron's paper-thin skin in the end started to tell and again Minto upstairs downstairs look at the work on the inside he knows how to free the arms and the overhand right that Shane Cameron really allowed to hit and again Minto uses his elbows well you see the elbows there on the inside his forearm dug to the body and that tired out Cameron he rallied I thought this was a terrific fight, certainly more than entertaining. We were all hoping that Shane could pull it out because basically I'm a New Zealand as well by now. My 13th trip here, but Minto, oh man, this is why I love prize fighters. This kid just went right and it all the way. Well, like we said earlier, if the underdog in the fight gets a sniff of victory, he changes. And uh, he knew how to, certainly knew how to work the cuts. He knew all the tricks in the book of an experienced pro. And that's probably something that Shane Cameron could uh, learn a few tricks out of. Lance Revel took points off in round five and round six. But it didn't matter in the end. The seventh and final round, Cameron came out well for the first minute or so. And then Minto continued to come on. Cameron couldn't find the answer. Brilliant and the stop. referee stopped the fight. Brian Minto the new Oriental WBO heavyweight champ. Well, I can't wait to hear the interview with our man Clint Brown in there. This has been some night of boxing. Brownie, let's hear what the guys have to say, and I know you with the new champion. Yes, we're ringside now with the new champion, Brian the Beast Minto. Congratulations. How does that feel to win that belt here in New Zealand? 
it's a good Christmas present. Uh, I just got a phone call from my wife, and she said, you got to win this fight, so guess what I did? I brought home a Christmas present, and we're going to have a good Christmas this year. Fantastic. What does it mean to you to get this fight? Is there a chance that you could go against, what, Joseph Parker now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm promised two more fights, so I'll be back in March, and then I'll be back in uh, June or July. So, hey, sky's the limit. I love it here. I've been here for three weeks. I had, the Kiwis are great people. I met like four people that took care of me. They gave me love and treated me like their family. I came out here by myself with Kevin Barry. So I definitely, you know, it was a new team for me and I adjusted well. Hey, you know what? God is good. Now, Kevin, you always said that uh, Brian is a very good boxer. He's a bit of a spoiler. Uh, Bob was saying in the commentary that he couldn't believe some of the work you've probably done with him over the last uh, month or so. So uh, the game plan tonight, what was it? Well, yeah, the game plan was to keep busy. I knew Brian was a very dangerous, very, very strong fighter, and as as, sure, as uh, Shane is. But I needed Brian to keep pressuring him and work off his double jab. And you know, he kept coming forward. You know, he put Landis some good body shots. His overhand right worked very well. I wanted him to make it a dog fight. Okay, what about the heads and the elbows? Clean fight, dirty fight. But, you know, that wasn't part of the tactics. But that's Brian Minto. They've seen Brian fight before. That's how Brian fights. He fights very in close. He's a very aggressive fighter. So there's nothing intentional? No, it wasn't at all. I just throw tight punches in short. And, you know, it was, no, it was not intentional at all. You know, so, I, did, I did lose a couple points, probably was, you know, and uh, I was trying to not do it, but it's, sometimes it's just out of habit that uh, when you throw a hook or something in tight like that, that your elbow does catch the guy. And we talked about it before the fight. You thought that perhaps your activity, the fact that he's coming off a year off, that that could be a, an edge for you and a, and a key advantage in the end. Well, I knew it was because I was off for a full year, and guess what? I got knocked out my first fight back. So, you know what? When you're out of the ring, it's a different atmosphere. And I could see on the look on his face when he come in the ring that there was a lot of anxiety. I mean, I, I was just in the ring about four weeks ago. So it, it makes a difference when you're more active. You just can't come back in the sport and fight a guy like me as a tune-up fight. It just doesn't work. And, you know, and I give Shane all the respect for coming back and fighting a strong fighter. I mean, I got seven losses on my record, but a lot of them were decisions over in uh, other countries that I didn't even get one round by the Polish judge. You know, I, I got uh, short end of the stick a lot of times. But, you know, tonight I had to bring my own judges because it's the way it works. Unless, unless they want to adopt me here in uh, New Zealand, is one of their own, hey, and maybe I can get the respect that the fighters here get. That would be great. Now, what does this mean to you? And in KB, what does it mean to you? Because you've got Joseph Parker ringside. What happens now? Does he fight the, the beast or what? Oh, it's a little bit early to say, but you know, one thing I can say is that Brian Minto will be back in New Zealand fighting. Hey, me and Joseph became mates too, so it's all business. I was cool with Shane. I'm not a jack off. I don't. I don't talk bad to people, so I definitely give everybody respect. Because if you climb up these three steps and through the rope, man, you're a man. So definitely, I give everybody respect. And let's hear it for uh, the champion tonight, Brian the Beast Minto. And let's hear it also for Shane the Mountain Warrior Cameron. Shane, what was your take on that fight? Oh, first of all, I'd just like to thank everyone here for coming out tonight. I know it's a uh, Coming up to Christmas, you know, it, it's hard to go spending big dollars to come watch a fight and I commend you on that and, and thank you for coming along to support me. It's uh, very sorry I couldn't come away with a victory tonight. It's just one of those one of those bad nights at the office and uh, Brian Minto, I commend him on, on, on such a great fight plan. He just put too much pressure on me and, and the cuts were just, just a bit difficult to see in times. But I'd just like to take this time to thank um, uh, three key sponsors that have been with me for 10 years. I'd like to thank the Mayor Butcher which is Mike Morton. Thank you very much for all your support for over the last 10 years. I'd like to thank DHL, Brian at DHL, for looking after me for 10 years, and Emma at Puma for 10 years, and other sponsors that have been looking after me. Those are the key ones that looked after me for such a, such a long time through my career. Doesn't mean I'm going to end it right now. I would just like to thank those guys to take this opportunity, and thank you everyone for turning up tonight, um, and congratulations, Brian. What a great one. Clean fight, dirty fight. Oh, it's just, just one of those fights. The, 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 head, the head was coming in, clash your heads all the time. And, and with all me susceptible to getting cut, it just, I come off second best. Now, you were going to take the whole year off. Is it one of those situations where it was a good opportunity to get back in the ring? You thought it would be a good fight that you could take, but it's uh, turned out to be like uh, the last thing you think would happen. But once again, it's boxing. Expect the unexpected. Oh, exactly. You know, I, you know, I was confident in beating Brian, but, you know, he was confident in beating me. And, and he come away with it tonight, just he had a better game plan than me, I just couldn't fire. 
uh, but take nothing away from from Brian. He, he done well, and, and, and me, I trained hard, but just wasn't enough for tonight. And just explain to the people what's it like when you come back after a year off, and you've got to get that rhythm back. You can see that we knew Brian was probably going to dominate the early couple of rounds, and then as you were starting to come back, bang, the ice got cut. You couldn't start seeing, and that sort of stuffed it all up for you. Yeah, it was just a fight, plan, fight you know, just a style of fight and how he fights and, and how I fight. Just, oh, you know, we can talk all night about it, but at the end of the day, he, uh, I lost and he won. And um, I'd just like to thank my team, Kenny, Henry, for doing all the hard work, my bro Rob, my mum and my dad, my mum's at home, hello mum, and dad, and my whole family, my wife Tara, for supporting me all the way through. Thank you very much. Apparently Polly has to go and feed the pigs tomorrow, so she might be a little bit pigged off. <laughs> That's from Graham, by the way. She will be, but I think she'll be happy at home sitting there. She'll be. She rang me before the fight, and she said one good thing about watching at home: she can run in and out of the room in between the fights. So she had opportunity to run out of the room when uh, when Bob was coming. Now, what are you going to do? You take a bit of time now. Uh, you want to fight Joseph Parker? You want to have a rematch against Brian Minto? What? Oh, I'm not making any decisions at the moment. You know, I just want to. I just want to have a good Christmas. Uh, I've got a baby coming, 12th of January. So. I'm just focusing on that, focusing on my business, Shane Cameron Fitness, and just I'd like to thank all the, the, the team that come out too from Shane Cameron Fitness, awesome guys. Kenny, what was your take on the bout, mate? It was, uh, it was what, what we sort of expected, really. I mean, Shane prepared with um, sparring partners at Ford like that, but um, on the night, Brian, you know, he, he got the better of it. He, that last card, unfortunately, was caused by an elbow, but that's sometimes part of the game. And you decided what? Let's not carry on because you don't want to risk too much more damage. Well, he, he couldn't see properly out of that eye, so you know it's it's hard. You can't fight with one eye, mate. And, and he's only going to take more damage, so there's no sense in it. Kenny Rachel, thanks very much. And that's it. We'll just wrap it up from the ringside here. One more round of applause, please, for a very gallant Shane the Mountain Warrior, Cameron. Take a round, we'll go to a break, and come back here on the Woodstock Fight for Life.